Ugh, seriously? My phone just did a synchronized swim with Whispering Lake. Yep, the same lake with more disappearances than a magician's act. Talk about a magic trick I could have done without. See, folks? This is why you don't text and walk or hike or exist near bodies of murky brown water, I muttered, staring at the ripples where my sleek black phone went belly up. My audience, consisting of a lone crow perched on a dead branch, didn't seem impressed. Okay, maybe the whole conquering my fear of water by debunking local myths spiel wasn't as convincing as I thought. I couldn't let a phone. And my pride drowned that easily. Besides, admitting defeat to a glorified puddle would kill my online cred. Taking a deep breath, which tasted suspiciously like damp earth, and something vaguely fishy, I crouched by the water's edge. The mist that hung over the lake swirled around me, whispering secrets I couldn't quite understand. Creepy, I thought, feeling a shiver crawl down my spine. Not from the cold, mind you. The air was oddly still, despite the wind whipping through the trees earlier. Suddenly, a glint of metal caught my eye. There, half buried in the mud, lay a silver locket. Curiosity peaked. Hey, a distraction from the phone. Shaped hole in my pocket. I scooped it up. It was worn smooth. The inscription faded, but still readable. Beware. Beware of what? I scoffed, more to myself than the crow, who caught in response, its beady eyes fixed on me. Maybe it knew something I didn't, or maybe it just wanted my fries. As the sun dipped below the tree line, casting the lake in an eerie orange glow, a strange feeling crept over me. It wasn't just the oppressive silence or the mist that seemed to thicken with the fading light. It was a feeling of being watched, unseen eyes following my every move. Okay, maybe Whispering Lake wasn't just a myth after all. Maybe it had some secrets it wasn't keen on sharing, especially with curious explorers with a penchant for lost phones. But hey, what's a little existential dread compared to the perfect internet clout, right? With a forced laugh that sounded more like a nervous squeak, I shoved the locket into my pocket. Maybe I wouldn't find my phone, but I might just find a story worth telling. And who knows, maybe even conquer my fear in the process. The storm hit with the fury of a toddler throwing a tantrum. Rain lashed against the rickety cabin walls. Wind howled like a banshee, and the lake outside churned like a giant pot of angry spaghetti sauce. My phone was definitely toast at this point. But hey, at least I wasn't out there getting swept away by the whispering lake, right? My inner voice, ever the optimist, offered little comfort, especially when the floorboards creaked under my feet, like they were about to give out, joining the symphony of spooky noises. Cabin fever was setting in fast. I explored the place, hoping to distract myself. Cobwebs clung to dusty furniture, and a faint, musty smell filled the air. The only light came from the fireplace, casting long, dancing shadows that stretched across the cracked walls. Creepy, then tucked behind a loose floorboard, I found it. A leather-bound diary. Its pages were yellowed with age, filled with spidery handwriting. Intrigued, I cracked it open. The first entry described a beautiful, calm lake, a stark contrast to the storm raging outside. But then... The tone shifted. Words like dread, whispers, and pulled under jumped out at me, sending shivers down my spine. Each entry followed a similar pattern. Idyllic beginning, descent into terror, and a chilling final line. Beware the grinning face in the depths. Grinning face. Yeah, nope, not good. My heart hammered against my ribs like a trapped bird. Was this some sick prank or something more? Suddenly, a loud crack echoed from the roof. Rain poured through a hole, drenching the fireplace and plunging me into darkness. 
panic clawed at my throat. I stumbled back, knocking over a rickety chair. The sound seemed to echo endlessly in the suffocating darkness. Then I felt it. A cold, clammy grip on my ankle. My breath hitched. My mind conjured images of skeletal hands reaching from the depths of the lake, grinning faces emerging from the swirling water. Get a grip, Ethan. I hissed at myself, fumbling for the lighter I always kept in my pocket. With a flick of my wrist, a tiny flame sputtered to life, illuminating a pair of muddy boots. Boots that weren't mine. Hello? I croaked, my voice shaky. The only reply was the howling wind. But the feeling of being watched persisted. The grin from the diary entry flashed in my mind. A chilling premonition. This wasn't just a creepy cabin in an old diary. This was something real, something dangerous. The storm finally coughed itself out, leaving behind a bruised sky and the eerie silence of the fog shrouded lake. Sleep was a distant dream, replaced by a gnawing unease and the unsettling feeling of eyes on me. The diary's final entry mentioned a hidden message within the locket inscription. With shaky fingers, I deciphered it. Seek the Whispering Stone. Curiosity warred with caution, but the need to escape this unnerving cabin won. Following the diary's cryptic clues, I trekked through the dense woods, the air thick with the scent of pine and damp earth. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig sent my heart racing, but the chilling grin from the diary entry kept me going, a morbid compass guiding my way. Finally, I found it. A hidden waterfall cascaded into a moss-covered cave, its entrance barely visible. The air inside was cold and heavy, carrying the faint scent of something ancient and unsettling. My flashlight beam danced across the damp walls, revealing strange symbols etched onto the rock. My throat tightened. This wasn't just a cave. It felt wrong. Yet drawn by an invisible force, I pressed on. Then I saw them, spectral figures shimmering like trapped moonlight, their faces contorted in the same chilling grin as the diary entry. Their eyes locked onto mine, a chorus of whispers filling the cave. Beware, embrace the depths, join us. A panic ripped through me. I stumbled back, knocking over a loose rock. The sound echoed, shattering the eerie silence. The figures lunged, their whispers morphing into guttural growls. Nope, I yelled, adrenaline kicking in. I wasn't here to become part of their creepy lake club. Remembering the diary's mention of escaping, I sprinted towards the cave entrance, the whispers and growls echoing behind me. My lungs burned, legs screaming in protest, but I pushed on. Reaching the waterfall's edge, I took a deep breath and jumped. The icy water slammed into me, momentarily taking my breath away. But it was a blessing, a barrier between me and the horrors of the cave. Swimming through the churning water, I fought my way back to the shore. Collapsing onto the damp earth, I looked back at the cave entrance, half expecting the figures to emerge. But all I saw was the mist rolling in swallowing the waterfall in its silent embrace. Had I imagined it? Was it just the diary messing with my head? The locket still warm in my pocket? Was a grim reminder it wasn't a dream? Shaken but alive, I stumbled back to the cabin, the grinning faces of the lake etched into my mind. Maybe conquering my fear wasn't the point. Maybe surviving was enough. But somewhere deep down, a cold dread lingered. The lake held secrets, dark and hungry, and I might have just opened the door. Sunrise painted the sky in bruised purples and oranges, casting long shadows across the lake. I should felt relief, 
escaping the cabin and the horrors within the cave. But the chill that clung to me wasn't just from the pre-dawn air. It was the lingering fear, the unsettling certainty that something had changed. Was it me or the lake? Driving away, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every ripple on the water, every rustle in the trees felt like an accusation. Was my paranoia justified or just the aftertaste of a bad dream? A glance in the rearview mirror sent a jolt of ice through my veins. There, etched onto the surface of the lake, was a chilling grin. It wasn't a reflection, not quite. It was as if the water itself had formed the image, a mocking farewell from the depths. Then, as quickly as it appeared, the grin vanished. Was I losing my mind? Suddenly, the question didn't matter. My phone, miraculously back in my pocket, buzzed with a notification. A new message on my channel, titled Whispering Lake. The truth. My heart hammered against my ribs. What did they know? I clicked it, my fingers trembling. The video started with shaky footage of the lake, the mist swirling ominously. Then, the camera plunged into the depths, revealing a chilling sight. Spectral figures, their faces contorted in the same terrifying grin. The video ended abruptly, replaced by a single line of text. They welcome you back, Ethan. My breath hitched. Back? What did they mean? Was I just a pawn in their twisted game? A plaything for the lake's amusement? As I sped away, the sun finally broke through the clouds, casting a golden glow over the lake. But the beauty couldn't mask the darkness lurking beneath. Whispering Lake had kept its secrets, but it had also shown me a glimpse of the horror it held. And the worst part, I knew deep down that I wouldn't stay away. The fear was still there, but so was a morbid fascination, a need to understand. Maybe to conquer, maybe just to face my demons head on. The grin, real or imagined, haunted me. A grim reminder that the lake wasn't done with me yet. And whether I liked it or not, I was drawn back into its chilling embrace. The story was over, but the horror wasn't. It lingered, a silent promise of more to come, echoing in the whispers of the lake. 